Hey guys, just Janny. Today I wanted to show you how I make my tie clips. Here's what it looks like on the back. Um, if you haven't made these before, they're really fun and simple, but I would suggest you get a tie from a thrift shop or something if you don't have one, so that you can put your clip on and make sure it fits that thickness because you have to remember you're going to have the two layers of tie and the placard from the shirt in there. So if you make one and try it on and it's really tight, you'll know you need to back it off a smidge. So tie tacks, I should say ties, come in kind of four different sizes. So what I have is more of a traditional size tie. Um, so mine is about three inches wide at the widest and I think traditional is three and a quarter. And then tie tacks will either come three quarters the way across or halfway across. So you can make a shorter one but I like this one so that's the one I'm going to show you today. Um, start with spoon or fork, regular size doesn't matter which one. Um, I do like that if you use one that has the little pattern on the end that you get that little detail on the back. I just think that adds to it to have that little detail. So let me see if I have one. Actually it's the same one and it has the little detail. So what I do is just flatten the handle out a little bit. We want these to be four inches. So I'm going to grab a sharpie and put a mark there. Now I use my mini bolt cutters to cut it. So if you have those, go ahead and do that or however you like to cut yours. So when you do that, you have this little bit of a curve and I like to flatten that out and then you're going to not just grind it flat but smooth off the corners and most importantly smooth off this back part so it's rounded and it's smooth on that edge because when you go to slide it on, if you have even a little bit of roughness right there, it's going to snag that tie fabric. So let's flatten it, grind it, gonna round out your corner and make sure you smooth out that back on the end. And then I'll show you how I mark it and bend it. Okay, so we've got that ground off, rounded, really smooth on the back so it won't snag. So we're going to mark on the back of your piece and this is four inches. We're going to mark it at two. Now before I show you how I bend mine I wanted to explain why you bend it where you do. Because you'll get, if you bend it exactly on the line which would be two inches, it would fold in half and you'd have the same amount on each side, right? And you can tell that's not what this looks like because we're leaving this loop here and we're bending it down. So we know this side's gonna end up shorter, but if you bend right on the line, what we expect to happen is when you leave that loop open, the other end becomes shorter. Okay, so I bend mine in my bender press. I will show you how I do that. But you can do it on your anvil. Okay, so I'm going to use my bender press. You can see I've got my line right in the middle. But what I wanted to show you is I like to start with the smallest pin in this smallest channel. 
and for a lot of things we want to put it right on that line for this one I like to put the line hang on one sec get it where I want so that I can just see the line right along the edge of the pin so that means that my bend is not going to be in the center it's just going to be slightly off center and I do that so that I maintain the full two inches on this side and the curve starts there and then it, it gets shorter on the back if I put it with that line right in the center the curve will start on this end and it will be a little shorter that's perfectly fine if you want the little bit shorter of a tie clip so I'm just showing you how I do it to get the size I get so if you want to use get the full length to use on a traditional size tie then I put it so that my marker I can just see the line right there meeting up with that pin so now you can see that the bend starts at the line and starts to curve around and then I just move it up one get a little bit more bend in there same thing I'm not putting it over here I'm keeping that I'm using my hand to push it up and make sure that the pin stays on this side so that's about all I can get out of the bender press is that much of a bend and then I'll show you what I use to bend it the rest of the way over and leave that open shape there okay for this last part I'm going to take this with the front side facing over here and you can see the line will be right down there I'm using bail making pliers these are six millimeter and eight and a half millimeter size so I'm using the six millimeter size that's what so this opening here is what that's going to fit so I like to put it face down I'm going to hold these with my left hand because I'm right handed so if you're a lefty do it the opposite my my oldest daughter is a lefty okay so then I'm going to use my rawhide mallet and I'm just going to hammer on this end and hammer it over so I'm going to keep hammering so it's all the way it's almost touching there oops I forget I'm zoomed in there so you can see it's almost touching but now we need to make this bend right here and this end stick up and that gives you the opening to fit your material in and this is the tight spot that's going to hold it in place so to get that next part um, you can either put your bail making pliers back in it facing down and you can use a rawhide mallet or a rubber mallet and hammer it right about center and until it comes down and it will actually touch together it'll look like that and then that end will pop up okay before I finished mine I wanted to put my bail making plier back in this finished one so you could see you can actually see the dent here that little dull spot that is where I had hammered it or started hammering so I wanted you to see what that looked like on the plier Oop, get my fingers out of the way 
So you can see I'm hitting it right about there. So it, maybe it's not quite center. It's a little closer to the pliers. But once you start doing it, you'll see that you can't really hammer it much closer because it, it just doesn't want to bend right there. So I'm going to go back to the bender press just because I like it. If you want to just use a hammer, you can go ahead and do it that way too. Okay, so I came back over to my bender press. I still have my smallest pin. I have a big 4x4 four four, um, steel block. And then I have my little, what is that, 2x2 two two steel block. So I like to use a little piece of leather just so I don't scratch up the back. And what I'm going to do is press with this, but my hand might be in the way, but I put my bail making pliers in so that I can maintain this opening back here. And I'll use the press to press down where I want. So kind of see where we're at. Hmm, about there. So I'm gonna go ahead and press down and the pliers will roll forward. So I'm gonna do it. Uh, I'm going to do it super slow so you can see that. The pliers rolled forward with it. They're not level anymore. And this is perfectly flat. That's where we want it to be. Now if you watch, that end's going to pop up. You see that? Went from flush to popping up. That's exactly what we want. Now, if this isn't perfect, if maybe you got it too tight, you can grab a screwdriver or a pair of pliers and stick in there and just lift it up. So now we need to check it. So let's put it on a on my tie and see how it fits. Okay, here's the one that I just finished. Let's check it out. Get that one out of the way. Okay, I'm going to say it's a little too snug because you can see it doesn't want to go on all the way and I'm hitting the excess fabric in here and we know we got to get the shirt, the button placard in there as well. So this is why you should have your own tie to practice on or test them out on, make sure they fit. That way uh, if someone buys one from you, uh, it's going to work. They're not going to have to adjust it themselves. Okay, that one went on much better. Perfect. You can see the flat part is almost the same width as the back here. That's just a perfect fit. And there should be room for the shirt because it, it doesn't feel super tight. It's just snug, and that's what we want. Thanks for making that with me. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe.